Very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the 97th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Before we continue with the video, hit that like button, share with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. Incidentally, this is actually year, the second year, exactly two years ago, the Global Weather and Climate Report kicked off. And I thought it was interesting to note that, that the, the Global Weather Report has uh, been going on for the last two years exactly to the day so uh, i thought i would uh, i would share that interesting fact or not interesting fact depending on what way you look at it but nonetheless we have got obviously a lot of things going on globally at the moment here interesting time from a climatological point of view because we have just surpassed the summer solstice uh, the longest day of the year now where um we are now starting to see the um entire um system continuing to migrate northwards uh, in summer mode it really is quite an incredible thing to see when you look at it when you step back and go and see all the entire weather systems and the hadley cell and the various um the various atmospheric um waves etc etc continuing to migrate northwards with the northward migration of the sun and we are seeing the transition now to a more summer-like pattern for, for here in the UK, Ireland, Western Europe, but also we're seeing other things now starting to kind of develop in other parts of the world. The Mayan front, the Mancurian front, the, the rain systems, um, great rain systems around the world, such as uh, you know the, the Central American monsoon trough now starting to lift north, the, the Central American gyre. We're seeing with the changes in the atmosphere over uh, over North America, uh, rainfall distribution now starting to change shape as well. Uh, dry areas of Central America up in the Mexico, etc., etc., now starting to see relief as we're seeing that natural shift in the time of the year. We're seeing the jet stream uh, weaken further across the northern hemisphere. We're seeing the jet stream strengthen. Uh, further uh, south obviously with the, uh, the the winter now starting to really uh, kick in across the southern hemisphere we've just passed the shortest day of the year south of the equator as well so you can see here even just looking at this standout gfs 200 millibar wind uh, forecast here you can see the jet stream being strong across the southern hemisphere and relatively weak across the north what i want to point out to you is the the rather flat nature of the jet stream across the northern hemisphere as well we've seen a quite a dramatic change in the last week to 10 days or so we've seen a, a significant change in the upper air pattern across the northern hemisphere and that's been alluded to in recent times here in the channel as well lower pressure across the north higher pressure becoming stronger across the south and then where you've got the gaps in that uh, these high pressure cells we see rainfall lifting northwards and then obviously in the northern side of the system we have got heavy rainfalls with the, the, the natural storm track. Notice here, uh, exiting uh, right the way across the, the entire hemisphere, across the Pacific, across North America, and across the Atlantic, we've got a relatively flat jet with low pressure to the north and high pressure to the south. That constitutes a rather positive Arctic oscillation, as you can see in this graphic here. As we look at the North Atlantic oscillation, it too is going firmly positive. That means that we've got lower pressure across the North Atlantic and Greenland, higher pressure in the, the Europe, uh, including the UK and Ireland. And this is what the GFS expects to see in the upcoming five-day period, a textbook positive AO, NAO signal. And that tends to be a warm pattern for not only North America, but also here across Europe. Now, with regards to North America, quite interesting uh, times recently. We've seen a lot of moisture over the uh, Central America region, the Caribbean, extending up into the Gulf of Mexico. That has been a direct consequence of the MJO pulse being in the vicinity here. If we look at this graphic here, you can see the MJO present over Central America. And this has been quite important to see. This uh, area right here, greens represent the Reisner Browns represent sinking air. Now, one thing I want to point out is that as we move uh, through the upcoming week, we are likely to start to see that green 
over Southeast Asia, developing heavy rainfall in this region of the world, now start to pull up towards India. That should start to kickstart the monsoon season in more northern areas of India, for example. But notice something taking place over East Pacific and the Americas. As we move out of June into the month of July, I expect to see the tropics beginning to start to ease here. Now, remember we had Storm Alberto that was named uh, several days ago. That moved into the Bay of Campeche. It developed the circulation. Then it moved onshore near Tampico, Mexico. We've seen heavy rainfall, flooding rainfall, all the way up into Texas, 500 miles north of the center. By the way, this large envelope of uh, moisture extending from South America all the way up into South Texas. That has been the case in recent times due to the greens, the monsoon uh, pulse, moving through the area and expanding the moisture in this part of the world. Now, this has been a very, very important development for parts of uh, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, places that have had major drought during the course of the winter, just gone in the spring. Then we've seen the pattern change and high pressure, very powerful high pressure, extending, kind of stuck, anchored over this part of the world for weeks on end over Mexico, over Central America. Then that built northwards up into the western half of the United States. Then we started to see the monsoon trough activate over South America. That then allowed moisture up the eastern side of the Caribbean into Florida, removing the drought conditions essentially here. And then we've seen the high over North America shift eastwards. That then opened the door with winds coming around the counterclockwise or clockwise in fact around that area of high pressure we started to see the moisture getting lifted up the western side of the caribbean central america into mexico now and that has been the welcome relief that people here millions of people have been waiting for but it's going to be interesting folks in northern india um, and parts of pakistan desperate to see rainfall desperate to see rains for two reasons obviously for agricultural pur purposes but also for heat relief and that is what we are likely to see taking place as we move towards uh, the upcoming work week here we are going to start to see a significant pulse of njo active phase over this region of the indian uh, ocean and we're going to start to see a consequential subsidence large-scale area of sub subsidence over the americas and I would expect to see the Central American gyre start to die off. Um, but, you know, up until this time, we may have actually seen not one, but two named storms. This is obviously a pre-recorded video. So we may have seen the development or, or non-development of storm barrel that is expected to go out of the Yucatan in over the Bay of Campeche, where water temperatures are at 30, 31 degrees Celsius at the moment here, may develop and move into the, the very same area of Mexico that we've seen with um, with Storm Alberto. Upcoming seven days off the GFS Ensemble, rainfall-wise, you can see ongoing heavy rainfall across parts of the Caribbean up into the, the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, rather dry across the southeast United States and Florida, if you notice here. Uh, let me just blow this up just ever so slightly so you can see it a little bit better here. But you notice that we've got... Um, dry conditions across the uk uh, wet conditions across the northern us here we are going to start to see the area of high pressure weaken somewhat over the the eastern half of the united states in, in the coming week to come here but notice here that we're getting decent rains across um, southern and central parts of mexico here so this is going to be welcome news obviously then as we move uh, across the pacific here into indonesia we're going to see uh, some heavy rains to speak about but i think the focus of heaviest rain is going to be down towards uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos. This is where we're going to see some fairly heavy, significant flooding potential in the coming days. Notice here that uh, India is still dry across the north, especially the northeast into Bangladesh. We've got some very dry conditions here. It's central and southern and western portions, that western Ghats region of India could see some very heavy rainfall. Indeed, we're going to see a cranking of the southwest winds uh, over the western Indian Ocean, uh, the, uh, the Arabian Sea, and then moving on shore into western portions of India. That is likely to start to increase 
moisture and hopefully we can start to pull it a little bit further north here in the coming couple of weeks or so here so if we skip through the sequence here you can see that we start to see weather conditions increasing a little bit further north um if we initially talk about uh, india you can see here that we're starting to see weather conditions a little bit further north over india uh, parts of bangladesh in the parts of thailand as well drier conditions if you notice here to the south of india over the indian ocean itself got rainfall continuing over indonesia no surprise here not a great deal of uh, moisture across the equatorial regions of africa if you notice here and uh, you also notice that we've got the continuation of dry conditions across the southeast united states gulf of mexico becoming a little bit more widespread in terms of rainfall but i would expect to see things quieting down here in response to the mjo becoming more um of a, a less lesser influence uh, so to speak rather dry conditions so to speak across uh, much of europe if you notice here including the uk and ireland looking at temperature anomalies here so let's go back to the uh, initial five days and we can see here generally speaking where it's wettest it is dry uh, where it is wettest it is coolest and uh, where it is um, driest it is hottest that is the general rule of thumb so this is the upcoming day two through six and you notice here that where we've got the the wet conditions across parts of uh, mexico we are seeing relief from the heat uh, southeastern united states much of the lower 48 is actually fairly warm compared to average with the exceptions of nor the northern plains here parts of canada we're seeing heat versus cold it's a bit of a 50 50 much of africa is warm and average um we've got the a cool area across western russia to speak about but we've got some very hot conditions across parts of eastern kazakhstan western mongolia western china we've got some cooler conditions but a, a bit of a, a mixture between cold and warm across eastern portions of of china here still hot across the north of india S slightly less hot across central and southern india where we've got heavier rains down across the Malay Peninsula, etc., we've got uh, some below average temperatures thanks to the heavy rainfall. Notice Antarctica, some some fairly cool conditions here. Argentina and most of Chile below average, but the the rest of the, the South American continent is fairly warm at the moment here. UK and Ireland warmer than average as, as well. And if we skip back, you can play through this loop a little bit better here and see what we're looking at here as we continue to go forward here so you notice here as we continue to play through australia looking fairly warm compared to average across it with the exceptions of victoria and new south wales here that area of cool continuing over western russia but generally speaking we have got a lot of warm conditions to speak about here uh, still some easing of the heat across parts of mexico and central america thanks to heavy rainfall finally let's have a quick look at the current temperature anomalies for the month to date so this is a as of friday the 21st of june you can see here quite a cold area where central and western portions of canada some of the coldest anomalies anywhere on the planet is over northern portions of a uh, alberta uh, manitoba saskatchewan uh, at the moment here we've got some fairly significant anomalies of four to six celsius below average We've had a storm track running around the top of the high over the lower 48 that has continued to see stormy conditions heavy rainfall and as a consequence um cooler temperatures here we've got a bit of a mixed bag across uh, most of eurasia here but we still have a cold anomaly across the uk and ireland i suspect that the heat won't be strong enough the during the final week or so of june to eradicate that the uh, minus two minus three anomaly across the uk and ireland here but we'll wait and see what happens warmer than average across the uh, ontario as you can see most of the lower 48 is warmer than average most of south america is warmer than average eastern australia cold or than average compared to the west if you notice here and then the african continent is generally warmer than average with exceptions of parts of the interior south and the equatorial belt very very warm compared to average across southeastern uh, portions of europe here and also into uh, the parts of the middle east we've got above average conditions here finally looking at the extremes that are taking place around the planet you can see here that we have got the some remarkable heat to speak about we did see some all-time 
hot nights in parts of northern India. Temperatures uh, no lower than 37 Celsius in parts of Rajasthan province of, of India. Uh, temperatures as high in recent days as 51.5 in, in parts of Iran, Iraq, 50.7, uh, Kuwait City, 50.3 and 49.5 in the UAE. So very significant conditions here. This is the overnight uh, temperature here at Delhi. A new all-time hot night for the uh, for one observatory uh, recording site here. A minimum of only 35.2. That's why northern India desperately needs that monsoon to start lifting further north. Incredible heat across eastern North America in recent times here. We've had uh, uh, unusually hot nights as well. Exceptionally high nights. Musani on the G icy waters of James Bay. A minimum temperature of 25.8, which is pretty remarkable. Parts of Quebec no lower than 25.5 as well. Uh, and we've also seen an impressive high at Bathurst, New, New Brunswick, this uh, back on the, the 19th of June, uh, a maximum of 37.6 Celsius with a humidity of 46 Celsius, which is pretty incredible stuff. And then we've seen some uh, daily monthly and all-time records being achieved in parts of Quebec and Ontario in recent times. You can see here these tweets here, uh, all-time record of 34.9 at the North Cape, Prince Edward Island. Uh, that is also a new June record as well as an all-time record. Obviously, it would be a, a, a new June record if it was an all-time record. You know what I mean. <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, pretty pretty incredible heat across eastern portions of North America at the moment here. Um, so, yeah, I think I've kind of covered enough. Um, do hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe if you enjoyed the, co uh, the content of today's video. Drop a comment in the, uh, in, in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the content. Hope you're continuing to enjoy the content here on the channel. Lots of contents. So I'm going to round up and I'll see you tomorrow with the European Outlook. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye for now.